Hello guys welcome back to our anime explainer. Today is explanation of upcoming episode of Jade Dynasty based on novel. So let's start. All was quiet in the surroundings. The deep late night was the moment of desolation. The quiet long street, the bright moon hung in the horizon, clearly and brightly shining down, pulling long shadows out of the two people standing in the desolate street. What kind of emotion was it, like thousands and thousands of words twining around the heart, just that when one was facing it, no words came out. The late autumn lonely wind, gently stirred the clothes. Tianwei in Lu Zueki's hand, twinkling with faint blue light, slowly dropped down and withdrew. Ghost Li remained silent. Lu Xuechi looked at the man in front of her. Under the moonlight, Ghost Li suddenly felt breathlessness. Without making any moves, without fighting and even without injury or blood, but for some reason, every time he faced this beautiful girl, in front of her eyes, he also had an inexplicable feeling. The unparalleled beauty, clear and rippling like snow, like the first time they met, that pure beautiful girl, aloof from the rest. Just that, not knowing since when, in her eyes, his figure was in it, just now that girl, is she he Huan sect Jin Pinga? Lu Xuechi suddenly quietly asked. Ghost Li was surprised, quietly nodded and said, yes. Lu Xuechi looked at him, a glint seemed to flash deep in her eyes, she indifferently said, were you with her all along? Almost subconsciously, Ghost Li immediately shook his head, said, no, I have nothing to do with her, his voice suddenly dropped, felt something strange with his feelings, as if trying to explain something. But Lu Zueki's unusual glint disappeared, as if a certain burden was suddenly lifted from her shoulder, even her expression seemed to turn gentler. Just that, between the two of them, they were still separated by a long distance, like a deep chasm. The moonlight like water, lingered on this desolate street. Jin Pinga and Li's unpursuing figures had long disappeared, in the large mountain stronghold, it seemed like they were the only remaining ones. They were the irreconcilable evil and good, but neither one of them had any intention to fight, in the cold bright light, Lu Xuechi suddenly said, Can, can you walk with me? Ghost Li looked up, a surprised look in his eyes. Strolling on this derelict street, the late night, the water-like moonlight. Both sides of the street were crumbling and dilapidated walls, all in ruins, just that when the night breeze blew over, this foreign land mountaintop thousands of miles away from their hometown, in the tranquility, it seemed to have a faint gentleness. Two of them walked side by side, but maintaining a distance of three kai, unintentionally, or intentionally, they also seemed to vaguely avoiding something. But in the middle of this dreary night, how could one's emotions not be entangled? The faint fragrance in the wind indistinctly floated beside, do you still remember, our first match at Qingyun Hill Seven Branches Martial Competition? Lu Xuechi suddenly broke the silence, quietly said. Ghost Li paused, in his heart he felt puzzled, Lu Xuechi in his impression was not someone who talked a lot, but somehow tonight she seemed to be rather strange. Although it was so but he still nodded and said, I remember, at that time you could already use Celestial Sword Wheel Thunder True Formula, it was really remarkable. Lu Xuechi looked at him, faintly said, but that match, the fact was I had lost. Ghost Li was silent then said, at that time regardless whether was it your cultivation, or training, all far surpassed me, actually I, it was me who had lost. Lu Zueki's face revealed a trace of dejection, lightly said, actually at that time I already knew, at the last critical moment, you deliberately held back. But I did not know why I was unable to control my competitiveness, and at that moment, no matter how, I was unable to tell the truth to my ecstatic teacher, and teacher uncle. Ghostly smiled and said, those trivial matters, after so many years, why do you still keep it in your heart? Lu Xuechi looked up, gazed at that bright moon in the horizon, quietly lost in thought, her beauty, under the moonlight, like a flower gently placed down by the bright moonlight. Since then, I remembered you in my heart. She softly, faintly said. Ghost Li's body shook, looked up abruptly, he could not imagine, the cold-like frost Lu Xuechi would say such words, but looking at that quiet and exquisite girl's beautiful figure under the moonlight, it was clearly in front of him. In his heart, Suddenly he had a premonition, like, a calamity coming quietly, in the other party's quiet pause, he could feel, he could no longer avoid it, until later, when we went to Kongsang Mountain Forsaken Abyss, fought with the evil faction people, struggled against the demons and evil spirits, you risked your life to save me, I too treated you in kind. She softly spoke, her voice floated with a trace of surreal, ghostly, no, as if at this moment he had once again turned into the former Zhong Xiao Fan, the past times, one by one surfaced in front of him. Just that, he was unable to speak even a word, at that time, we were entrapped in a hopeless situation, 
making the last struggle for our lives, but I was never once afraid, if at that time I was to die together with you. I, she turned around, facing this man, in her eyes, a never-before-seen brilliance, a never-before-appeared multifarious tenderness buried deep inside her heart, and even her cheeks on her snow-like skin, a faint pink blush, with a captivating beauty, I would also be willing. She said it slowly, but with a determination. The night scene was just nice. The night wind gently drifted. The two people facing each other, suddenly became silent. Ghost Lee's heart was in chaos, thousands of thoughts and emotions poured thick and fast into his mind, but in the jumble of turbulent waves, a voice seemed to shout out loudly, Bai Yao. Instantly, he was drenched in coldness from top to bottom, chilling his blood, chilling his heart. Lu Xuechi quietly looked at this man in front of her, saw every change of his facial expression. The initial puzzlement and subsequently perplexed and maybe a slight panic, but suddenly detachment, a detachment that he wrapped himself tightly in. Just that the tenderness in her eyes, never once lessened, still continued to speak in a low voice, until later, Liu Bo Hill, Tongqian Peak, things happened one after another. I stood at the side, watched helplessly as you slowly changed. Until the end, at Tongqian Peak, under the Zhuzian Celestial Sword, after that Bai Yao Lady blocked the sword for you, I knew, you would never be able to turn back. Ghost Lee clenched his fists, nails digging deep into his palms, he breathed with effort, tightly gritted his teeth, so that his detachment would not collapse in an instant. Just that, just that. Just that how could he detachedly face this woman, why are you doing this? He quietly said. Lu Xuechi gave a miserable laugh, her eyes misted, the figure under the moonlight, desolate and beautiful. I do not regret, it has been ten years already, I still think of you in my heart, if it's possible. I rather give up everything and go to the ends of the world with you but in the end it is already not possible. She bit her lips, softly, slowly repeated, not possible, not possible. Then, raised her head. Her lips were so white, the skin on her face seemed to be even paler like almost translucent. Only her gaze, bright like that lonely moon hanging high up in the horizon, Qingyun sect raised me and educated me, what's more teacher doted on me, loved me, taught me, not matter what I cannot betray Qingyun. I'm telling you these things today, because I want you to know my intention, how I will in front of you, sever ten years of my wishful thinking. Her fair hand, clutching onto Tian Wei tightly, as if she was using all of her strength to speak those words. Every word, like a sharp knife, landed in Ghost Li's heart. But he remained silent, did not say anything. Intensely, staring. This man, who was once engraved so deeply inside her heart, was just standing in front of her, but as if he was on the other end of the world. Tian Wei, unsheathed. The graceful arc twinkling with blue light, glimmered past in the air, in front of Ghost Li slash down. In the derelict street, between the two people, just one footstep from Ghost Lee, a deep rift appeared. Separating the two people. The moonlight was desolate, the night deepening. Her white clothes like snow, fluttered in the windless air, like a fairy, in her bright eyes, tenderness and agony, were all only deep inside her heart. After tonight, if we meet again, you and I will be life and death foes. Her pale face did not have a trace of blood, even her figure also started to tremble. These ten years, each time I have foolish thoughts, I would dance with my sword at the back of the hill, she faintly said, tonight, let me dance for the last time. Tian Wei celestial sword made a cry like a phoenix, shot up into the sky. The girl with clothes white as snow, flew up, in the desolate beautiful moonlight, as if a nine heavens fairy had descended onto the mortal world, danced madly. That glint from the sword indistinct like a dream, danced and consumed the remnants of a millennium-long feelings. The past years, slowly surfaced, unhurriedly passed by. Who was it that softly sighed, whose eyes were obscured? The sword light like snow, whose heart did it hurt? She obsessed. She solitary danced. A wind blew, the clouds separated. The crumbling and dilapidated walls scattered one by one. Stones rolled everywhere, dust flew, the sound of the wind mournful. Her figure floated, like drifting in the wind, the surrounding winds and clouds gathered together, the sky darkened again. Only leaving a clear shadow, indistinctly drifting. What was it that quietly shouted inside the heart, what was it that impulsively called out in the chest? He could not, could not, could not. His body trembled, maybe to walk forward. That foot lifted up, in the air, looking like it was about to step over the deep mark in the ground. The wind whistled, the shadow-like frost. The sword-like autumn waters, descended from the sky, the sharp sound piercing the air, but it came to an abrupt stop, in front of his brows. The wind that was still howling in the sky, gradually died down, 
the stones which were rolling around, slowly stopped. The sky again opened up, the moonlight regained its brilliancy, bright and clear like water. Luzueki's exquisite face, just right in front of him, like ice like frost, only in that pair of eyes, there seemed to be still a faint feeling, tenderness like water. Their eyes, both came to that in-between them deep scar. Tian Wei celestial sword's chill, as if emitting from the tip of the sword through the air, chilled the entire body, waking him suddenly from the hazy dream. Her face, was so beautiful that it did not seem mortal. Ghost Li's foot, stopped in the mid-air, slowly, slowly retreated. Lu Zueki's hand holding the sword, slowly dropped down, that person's figure, in the end still quietly retreated from this deep mark. Then she smiled. That smile seemed like a magnificent lily, which in its previous and current lives flourished in the night scene. But after a moment, she frowned and bent over, a soft moan, spitted out a mouthful of blood. Droplets of dark red, trickled onto her white clothes, like a brightly colored yet evil flower. She was still smiling, a last look at that man, turned, wielded her sword, flew up, transformed into a white light, streaked past the night sky, under the quiet bright moon, disappeared into the distant night, dot l eating a man alone, silently looking at the street in front of him, that dyed red line of dot deep scar. In the darkness, the nine-tailed celestial fox, Xiao Bai, carried Xiao Hui, watched everything that had happened on that street in the distant. Xiao Hui seemed slightly restless, moved in her embrace. Xiao Bai gently patted its head, placed a finger at her lips, making a quiet gesture. Xiao Hui quietened down, but its eyes were still fixed onto its master's desolate figure, never left for even a moment. For the longest time, Ghostly stood before that deep mark for a very long time, he kept on like that, kept on standing, unmoving. And Xiao Bai seemed to be very patient, in the dark waited, right then, even the restless Xiao Hui was also quiet. Finally Ghost Li's body moved once, then as if using a lot of effort to turn, turned his head. Looking from far, this man's face was like dead ash, extremely hagged. Xiao Hui's body, again shuffled restlessly. Far ahead, Ghost Li quietly muttered, but nobody could hear it clearly enough. After a moment, he vacantly raised his head and finally unhurriedly left. Until he had gone far, Xiao Bai carrying Xiao Hui came out, walked to the deep mark left by Lu Zueki's Tian Wei celestial sword, she quietly stare, after a long while sighed, the love in this world, really breaks one's heart. Pity those two people, so outstanding but like fools, shrieks were heard, Xiao Bai was startled, it was Xiao Hui who disagreed. It jumped down from Xiao Bai, its but sat on the ground by the side, hatefully refusing to speak, imitating a human's angry gesture, both of its hands crossed in front of its chest, both cheeks puffed up, looked like it was fuming with anger. Xiao Bai laughed in spite of herself, in a low voice said, you don't like that I said your master is a fool. Xiao Hui nodded, Ji Ji, called out a few times, its eyes blinked. Although it still had an angry expression, but its long tail, quietly rolled over, wrapped itself around Xiao Bai's feet. Xiao Bai smiled and shook her head, crouched down and smoothed Xiao Hui's head, her eyes gradually drifted away, after a long while, softly said, actually how would you know, my wish in these thousand years, is just to be such a fool once and then to also have a fool that would treat me well that's all. If that girl really want to sever her love, that sword would have stabbed in long ago. I guess until the end, although she used the sword to point at Ghostly, but in her heart, how she had longed. For Ghostly to disregard everything and step forward. Just that, if Ghostly stepped over, he would not be Ghostly in his heart, in the end there is still a Bai Yao, dot. Xiao Bai quietly said, Xiao Hui seemed not to understand, scratched its head, three eyes looked at Xiao Bai. Xiao Bao stared blankly for another while, suddenly laughed came out of her reverie, stretched her hand and carried Xiao Hui up, smiled and said, forget it, it's their affair, the knots in their hearts eventually will still need themselves to untangle. Beside, the future, who could clearly say it, don't you agree Xiao Hui? Xiao Bai held Xiao Hui in front of her, smiled and asked. Xiao Hui's tail swished in the air, called out a few times, wagged its head, but not knowing if it really understood. Fenxiong Valley Tianxiong Residence this was a quiet place in the inner part of Fenxiong Valley, built against the mountain. Surrounded by lofty walls on three sides, only the front door was left unlocked, obscuring the interior from people outside. Even though Fenxiong Valley underwent such huge changes in the past few days, but in the nearby area here, Fenxiong Valley disciples still were not seen around, because this was the residence of the Fenxiong Valley's master Yun Yilan, and also the place of his seclusion. Ever since Yun Yilan started his seclusion, Fenxiong Valley disciples were prohibited from entering this area, but of course, 
Fensiong Valley disciples naturally guarded the perimeter of this place like a bastion of iron. And for those that were able to access Tianxiong residents, other than Shangguan Si whom Yun Yilan had always heavily relied on, only his personally imparted skills disciple Li Zun could enter the place and meet his greatly respected teacher. As for the rest including the older generation like Lu Shun, all were too prohibited from the place. Even to the extent where Fensiong Valley was infiltrated and the nine-tailed celestial fox, which had been incarcerated for 300 years, was released, and even when there was a possibility that the legendary Fensiong Valley treasure Inferno Mirror might appear, Yun Yilan never once emerged, only overseeing the situation through Shangguan Si. He in that small courtyard, what seclusion was he exactly doing? This question had often surfaced in many of the Fensiong Valley's disciples' hearts. The sky gradually lightened, Changguan Si in the slightly damp morning air, lightly pushed open this door, walked in and then closed the door. Appearing before him was a courtyard that he was already familiar with, a few body trees gently swayed their branches in the morning breeze, other than a small path in the middle, the surroundings were all green grass. Other than that, there was nothing. The residence of one of the world's three biggest good faction sect leader was actually so simple and plain. At the end of the path, there was a white and dark grey small house with two yards, built against the mountain, the wooden door painted purple was also unlocked. Shangguan Si walked over, pushed open the door and then closed it. Silence immediately descended, as if the turmoil of the mortal world, all at the moment when he raised his hand, locked out of the house. In the room, there was nobody, only a few simple furnitures, on the tables and chairs, there seemed to be a light layer of dust. Shangguan Si focused himself and walked straight into the house, came to a cupboard and pulled the left drawer, stretched his hand in and seemed to activate something, in the next moment, a low sound was heard behind him. The entire wall, unhurriedly withdrew to the right, revealing a solid rock wall with a dim tunnel cut in the middle of it, only wide enough for one person. Shang Wan Si did not hesitate and walk in, not long after his figure disappeared into the dim tunnel, the door unhurriedly closed up, disappearing without a trace. In the dim tunnel, a stone about the size of a pebble set into the wall every few intervals gave off light, for the purpose of illumination. And while he was walking, he did not experience any feeling of suffocation, naturally a ventilation channel existed somewhere here. The path was not considered long, very soon he reached his destination, a stone chamber similar to the size of the room outside. There was nothing in the stone chamber, only a folding screen placed horizontally in the middle, blocking his view. Suddenly, from behind the chamber, an extremely haggard voice was heard, is it Shangguan Jr. brother? Shangguan Si walked forward two steps, leaving about four, five steps from the screen, respectfully said, yes, senior brother, is your body still feeling all right? Seemed like that voice belonged to the reputable Fensiong Valley Valley master Yun Yilan, which had shook the world, but somehow this good faction, giant figure named together with Qingyun sect Reverend Dao Xian, Qianyun Temple Pu Hong master, right now sounded like a dying old man, who had a deficiency of qi. He was heard laughing quietly, faintly said, my body. Will it still get well, it can only be like this, just slowly waiting for death. Shang Wan Si's countenance changed, a complicated expression on his face, he was about to say something when he was interrupted by Yun Yilan's weak voice, how is things? Shang Wan Si hesitated for a moment then said, we have somehow more or less investigated, the person who had provoked the human fish on that night was evil sect He Huan sect Jin Pinger, most probably, because He Huan sect men were assassinated by the human fish in the death marsh, so she used ruthless methods for revenge. Yun Yilan was silent for a while behind the screen, his voice suddenly turned deep and said, then of our clandestine important matter, did she found out? Shang Wan Si's body suddenly trembled, in this instant, that voice behind the screen suddenly was filled with authority, from what I think, she still has not. Then that is good, Yun Yilan seemed relieved, said else if the matter is leaked out. So many years of hard work, would most likely go down the drain. Shang Wan Si nodded and said, senior brother can be rest assured. Yun Yilan paused for a while, said, that Ivaldor who had sneaked into the inferno altar and released the nine-tailed celestial fox, have you investigated who was it? Shang Wan Si said, last night Li Zun teach nephew, and Kua Yu Hui tracked down Jin Ping near Tianxue stockade. Heard from him this morning, the evil sect Ghost King sect Ghost Li was also there and he made a sneak attack on Kua Yu Hui, causing his death. Luckily Qing Yun sect Lu Xuechi, who was sent by Reverend Dao Xian to inquire after senior brother, met him along the way and lent a hand, he was then able to escape from the two evil people's pincer attack. Ghost Li. Yun Yilan's voice paused for a moment, said, don't tell me it is that Zhong Xiao Fan, who had betrayed Qing Yun ten years ago. 
After speaking, he turned around and left. Not long after, his figure disappeared into the dim tunnel and a short moment after, a deep groan from the mechanism closing up was heard, evidently he had opened the secret door and left in the quiet stone chamber, Yun Yilan's laughter suddenly rang out, carrying a trace of desolation, and seemed to also be scornful, what were you thinking, pushing all of it to Li Zun, claiming that he had deduced it, you thought I would not know. Three hundred years ago, because you were derelict in your duties, you lost the inferno mirror, but after three hundred years, junior brother. You still did not make any progress. He he, he he, the desolate and bleak laughter, in the cold stone chamber, reverberated. After leaving Tianxiong residence, Shang Wan Si walked out of that door, for some reason, even with his level of skills, he let out a sigh of relief. He collected himself, contemplated for a while and then headed outside, after the familiar winding road, he came to a rather majestic hall, an inscribed board with three words written on it, Mountain River Hall. The name, together with this imposing big hall, gave one the impression of it looking disdainfully at the world. One wondered when Fensiong Valley forefathers built this hall to receive guests, did they also thought that one day, they would be ranked among the first in the world. Shang Wan Si, while thinking of that, slowly walked in. There were people sitting in the hall, other than the Fensiong Valley disciples standing aside, the guests in the hall were all good faction people, who had came to send their regards, about ten over number of people, Li Zun was sitting and accompanying them. And in Shang Wan Si's eyes, the most important thing was, the two people sitting right, at the front, Lu Xuechi, Fei Xiong. The two outstanding disciples of today's two most distinguished sects, naturally they represented their sects, so even though their ages were not like the other elders, but their ranks surpassed them. Fei Xiong, as usual in bluish-white monk robe, an amiable smile on his face, chatted cordially with Li Zun, replying appropriately. And Li Zun and Fei Xiong, considered to have known each other for quite some time, were quite delighted to see each other, evident from the way they talked, just that in between the chats, Li Zun's eyes frequently wandered over to Lu Xuechi, who was sitting beside Fei Xiong. Shang Wan Si saw all of that, by then everyone had noticed him walking into the hall, and had stood up one after another. Shang Wan Si smiled and returned the greetings, walked to the seat of honor, his eyes unexpectedly also glancing over at Lu Xuechi and Fei Xiong. The two of them gave obeisance to him at the same time, Lu Xuechi still did not speak, Fei Xiong instead smiled and said, It has been many years since we last met, Shang Wan teacher uncle's health is still as good, it is indeed fortunate. Shang Wan Si shook his head, and he he laughed, said, Old already, old already, already useless. Speaking, he stretched out his hands to invite the guests to take a seat. A thought went through his mind, for these past years, Fei Xiong's reputation in Tianyin Temple and the world's good faction was like the sun at high noon, everyone had already expected him to be the successor of Tianyin Temple, therefore this time he represented Tianyin Temple Piyu Hong Master to be here, it was not unexpected. But over at Qingyun Hill, it was heard that the main branch's disciple, Su Yi Cai, among the young disciples, was the most highly regarded by Reverend Dao Xian, but of course the publicity that Lu Xuechi had for the past few years was also very glaring and strong, including her exceptional beauty, was something that the good faction cultivations had been discussing with great relish. Shang Wan Si paused for a moment, said, the Avalders are tricky and cunning, love to hit a person when he is down, they took advantage of the natural calamity, and secretly made their move on our lowly valley, it is really detestable. Luckily our defense is tight, and have chased them out of the valley. Although we will not leave the matter at that, but unfortunately until today we still cannot find them. Fensiong Valley has sent out many disciples, but even up to now, other than a few insignificant figures, only yesterday Knight Li Zun teach a nephew and Miss Lu Xuechi tracked down evil sect He Huan sect Jinping. A pity we let her slipped off again. Right now we also don't know how we should investigate. F. A. Xiong frowned, the rest of the crowd also were speechless and the evil sect today had flourished in its power. On top of that Jin Pinger was the world's reputable ruthless lady, those lowly skilled good faction cultivators might also not want to offend her. And over at Fensiong Valley, because of different reasons, actually they did not wish for other sects to interfere. Immediately Shang Wan Si signaled to Li Zun with his eyes, Li Zun understood and stepped forward, cupped his hands to his chest and said, My humble self here thank everyone for your good intentions, but Fensiong Valley will do our utmost, even if it takes a long time but we will definitely investigate this matter therefore we also do not wish to trouble everyone, wait. Suddenly, a cold voice, spoke beside him. Everyone was startled, turned to look, it was that icy girl, Lu Xuechi, who had been keeping quiet. This cold lady highly regarded by the world, her face as cold as frost, just that in the cold eyes, there seemed to be a glimmer indistinctly, 
What exactly was she thinking in her heart? Those Evalders, her voice, reverberated in everyone's ears, most likely went to a place called Seven Mile Cave. The rest of the people immediately started discussing among themselves. Only Li Zun's body shook once. Immediately his eyes while looking at Lu Xuechi, had another strange expression, yesterday. Night while in a fight with those Evalders, Li Zun's senior brother and I both heard the evil Lady Jin Pinga said to, her voice, paused, then regained its normality, continued, to evil sect ghost king sect ghost Li. Seven Mile Cave these three words. Shang Guan Si frowned, glanced at Li Zun, this news, Li Zun for some reason, did not tell him. In the Great Hall, for the moment everyone looked at Fensiong Valley, Shang Guan Si contemplated and then smiled and said, unexpectedly Miss Lu has a clue, since it is so, our lowly valley will immediately send someone to check it out. As for our fellow faction cultivators, actually you all don't have to go, after all this is southern border and everyone only came to send their regards to our valley master. Therefore the good intentions of everyone, our lowly valley appreciate it. Everyone agreed with an acknowledgement. Li Zun, while everyone was talking, quietly stood behind Shangguan Si and looked at Lu Xuechi. Last night as he was pursuing Jin Pinga, first, Jin Pinga's skills were not below him, secondly, Jin Pinga had always been crafty and after using a few tricks in succession, she finally shook him loose. While he was fuming, he recalled Lu Xuechi, was still in the Qianxue stronghold and facing Ghost King sect Ghost Li, and so hurried back. Unexpectedly along the way, he met Lu Xuechi who was returning on her sword. After meeting her, he could not help, but was shocked. Lu Xuechi at that time looked like she had lost her soul. Her face was pale with no traces of blood and her white clothes even had dark red spots. It was the marks of blood. While alarmed, he called her in succession, that then made Lu Xuechi came out of her reverie, but she only quietly looked at him and then went straight back to Fensiong Valley. This icy cold girl, with her once fellow sect mate Ghost Li, in that decrepit Tianxue stronghold, what had exactly happened? Was it an intense fight? Was it a talk? Somehow, when Li Zun thought about that, an inexplicable anger surged up in his heart. His expression changed with his complicated feelings, and all these, did not escape Shangguan Si's eyes. Just that, these two people, never spoke a word, with a smile on their faces, spoke cordially. In the end, it was decided that the other sect representatives would return and, because Lu Xuechi and Fei Xiong's sects had deep relations with Fensiong Valley, in addition the information was given by Lu Xuechi, both of them stayed back and would go with Fensiong Valley men to Seven Mile Cave to thoroughly investigate. And almost at the same time, Ghost Li and Xiao by carrying Xiao Hui, appeared at the Horsehead Mountain. Looking at this lofty mountain that resembled the head of a horse, Xiao Bai smiled sweetly and said, Legend said that there is a deep cave on this hill, a dog deity worshipped by Miao people resides in it. There is a narrow mountain path at the foot of the mountain, big enough for only one person to walk through, once through it, it will be the Seven Mile Cave inhabited by Miao people. Ghostly expressionlessly looked at the mountain in front, without saying a word, quietly walked ahead. Since last night until now, he had not spoken a word. Xiao Bai stood behind, watched his back, a faint smile on her lips, she turned and patted Xiao Hui on her shoulder, said, then let's go. Xiao Hui called out, grinned, suddenly jumped down from her shoulder, ran ahead in a few steps, with a su sound, scurried up to Ghost Li's shoulder, sat down, turned and waved to Xiao Bai. Xiao Bao shook her head and laughed softly, followed along. Walking into the narrow tight mountain path, twisting and turning, on both sides of the solid steep stone faces, rocks thrusted out intermittently, if one was not careful, one's head might hit into it. And looking at the rock wall's surroundings, water droplets were still dripping at most places, tiny water pools formed where the water flows were the heaviest. On the top and bottom of the rock walls, at the dark areas, quite a number of dark green mosses grew on the rocks, contributing a slightly damp, cold feeling to the air. Ghostly and Xiao Bai made several turns, before they managed to turn out of this unknown number of years old mountain path, and to see the sun again. This day, the sun had just risen, different from the hazy weather for the past few days, it instead seemed to be rather sunny. After just walking out from the dim tunnel, under the sunlight, Ghost Li and Xiao Bai squinted their eyes instinctively, felt that the sunlight streaming down from the sky seemed to also carry a beautiful halo, shining down on them. After a while their eyes adjusted, from a distance the bustling sounds of activity slowly became distinct. Both of them looked ahead, the scene opened up abruptly before them, surrounded by mountains, a flat fertile and open land appeared before them. Rows of buildings and blocks of houses rich with Miao people's distinctive style rose steeply from the ground or built along the mountains, or tightly joined together. And there was even a small clear brook, flowing down from the dense mountains ahead, 
in this paradise-like land, meandering through. A lot of the meow houses were built on both sides of the brook. And above the water, looking from afar, the meow people built three bridges and all were unalike, one was a wooden bridge, and the most simple, two huge trees tied together and laid horizontally across the banks, that became a bridge. As for the other two, were made from stone and even more distinctive. Built by piling huge stones, crude and solid, placed flat at where the water surface was narrower, and then using thick heavy stone slabs to stack on top of it, it became a bridge. This was a simple and practical way of building a bridge in the southern border. But the last stone bridge was instead made from small rocks and without any bridge pier. It was an arch bridge, each stone tightly pressed together, suspended across the brook, clearly it had the central plain's distinctive architecture, to see it here, it was really puzzling. Ghost Lee saw it all and was surprised, but nothing was shown on his face. He and Xiao Bai continued to walk forward, the crowd gradually thickened and became even more lively. Most of loud chatter around them were in Miao language, to Ghost Lee he only heard gibberish, and could not understand a single word. Xiao Bai walked beside him and looked around, many of the Miao people also turned to look at them, because their faces were unfamiliar so mostly took a few more glances, but did not show any hostile expressions. After walking for a while, she quietly spoke to Ghost Lee, seemed like the southern border in these few years, has indeed became very much peaceful. Ghost Lee was surprised, asked puzzledly, what is it? Xiao Bai said, when I came here the last time, the Miao people were vigilant and on the alert when they saw outsiders, like they were facing a great enemy. At that time, rivalry between the five tribes were violent and cruel and fights broke out frequently among the tribes, if outsiders dared to come to this seven-mile cave and without any skills to protect themselves, most likely they would not survive. But looking at the situation today, I guess the fights must have reduced much over the past few years. Ghost Lee nodded slightly and looked around him, by now they had already walked into the center of the Miao people, this broad path was on one side of the brook, most of the tightly joined houses of the Miao people were on one side while the other side was the clear river water, with many green trees lining the shores. At a quick glance, most of the Miao houses were built using wood, its architecture greatly different from the central plains, squarish, simple and unadorned, and savage animals' bones were hung at the houses' corners, main doors and walls' edges, the more ferocious the animals were, the more commonly they were seen, probably it was the Miao people's custom, to display the bravery of the owner of the house. Both sides of the path had stalls set up by Miao people peddling their goods, but most of the stuffs were wild animals' furs, raw meat, and only further ahead, in the center were one or two stalls selling small jewelry, jades etc. playthings. Xiao Bai smiled and said, the furs here are all good grade stuffs and the prices are very cheap, if you want to get, buy some here, it is very worth it. Ghost Li's lips twitched, but he did not speak, continued to walk straight ahead. He slowly walked to the river bank and looked down, the water was extremely clear, from the banks, even the rocks at the river beds, could also be seen, the number of big and small fishes swimming and frolicking in the water were even innumerable. At a distance, a bird seemed to flit past, flapping its wings it landed onto the water, raised its head and looked around, and then contentedly closed its wings and moved gently on the water surface the living creatures of heaven and earth, in this place, unusually harmoniously. Xiao Bai slowly came over, Xiao Hui, who had somehow again gone over to her shoulder, curiously stuck out its head and peered down into the brook, what do we do now? Ghost Li indifferently asked. At the southern borderland, Zhuang, Miao, Tu, Li and Giao Shan these five tribes, controlled different areas and maybe, because each tribes were different and so each had different beliefs, deities and religions, but within the different tribes, they all had a specific place to worship their deities and ancestors, and that was the altar. The altar among the southern border tribes, indeed had a high status, to the majority of the tribe's people, most of the times when the shaman in the altar spoke and the words spoken by the great mysterious deity, there wasn't any difference. In the past when the wars among the five tribes were at their peaks, it was the same before each battle, to first consult the shaman in the altar and explain the situation to the deity, until the deity, also meaning the great shaman personally giving permission, the tribe leader then could launch a fresh new war. As such it could be seen, the altar and the shaman in it, what kind of status they had in southern border. And to what he knew, those shaman had always seldom receive outsiders. Ghost Li after remaining silent for a while, turned and spoke to Xiao Bai, that is Miao people's altar, the person that you mentioned, don't tell me. Xiao Bai smiled faintly and interrupted him, that's right, 300 years ago, what I saw here, was that the great shaman in the Miao tribe using soul returned powerful art, saving that Miao person whose one soul and three mortal forms had been absorbed by the mountain spirit evil demon. The great Miao shaman. Ghost Li's lips twitched again, if to say that the shaman in the altar had revered position in the southern border tribes, 
then as being the most powerful and with the highest status, and delivering the deity decree personally each time, the shaman could be also be said as the deity in the common people's eyes. If someone dared to offend the great shaman, Ghost Lee did not have any doubt at all, that all of the Miao people in this land and even all of the Miao people in the entire southern border would with all of their might, fight him. Xiao Bai looked at Ghost Lee with interest, smiled and said, so how, what do we do now? Ghost Lee glanced at her, the early dawn rays landed on her face, as if refracting it out, carrying with it a faint warmth. He did not speak a word, turned over and towards that altar halfway up in the mountain, unhurriedly walked. Xiao Bai smiled and followed along. This place, known as Seven Mile Cave, naturally covered an area as wide and known as the biggest inhabitation of the Miao people in the southern border, as they went deeper in, they could see more and more Miao people. From the fairly large path that they were traveling on, smaller paths constantly branched out to the sides, like an exuberant large tree branching out and expanding. Looking at the two of them from a distance, the road underneath them led straight to that altar in the distance, therefore also saving them the hassle of asking directions. Just that as they went deeper in, the number of Miao people noticing them traversing also increased, the whisperings around them unceasingly. Almost about the time to brew half a cup of tea, they came to the foot of the lofty enormous mountain where the altar was. Then, they stopped, not because they hesitated, but because the Miao soldier stationed at the foot of the mountain prevented them. Ghost Lee felt slightly agitated, but the situation before them was not exactly unexpected. Of course, as the holy supreme altar of the Miao people, if there was no increased surveillance, it would instead be unusual. This video will end here. Thank you for watching.